folks, 21st Century Film Docs here. I want to go ahead and show you how to reload your own ammo. Uh, there's going to be probably a couple of different series of how to reload different types of ammo, but this is going to be the first one I'm going to show you how to do, uh, at least how I know how to do it. There are a lot of different ways to do it. Um, I've certainly learned from many mistakes how to not do it. So what I'm going to do is show you the best way I know how to do it with one of these uh, kits that we can get from Lee Loader or one of the, the, the general Lee Loader kits that you can get uh, that are fairly inexpensive. Uh, so anyway, we're going to go over the different kinds of uh, items that you're going to need to reload ammo on a regular basis. And uh, we'll go through it step by step so you'll be able to reload your own ammo and take it to the range and hopefully have uh, uh, more, accurate, more, more accurate bullets and a uh, 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 more better time at the range uh, shooting more accurately at the range at longer distances. So anyway. Uh, here we go. All right, let's get started here. First, I'm going to show you all the materials that you're going to need to do reloading. Uh, first of all, you're going to have some kind of workbench. This is a collapsible one that I have that I use for sawing and whatnot, but I just put a plank of wood in here so I can convert it into a nice small table, which suffices for what we're doing here. The first thing you absolutely need to get and I can't emphasize this enough, is a reloading manual of some kind. Even if it's just a basic one that just has, you know, like this, it has some information about how to use the, the Lee product line, some of which it's hard to understand. But I use it almost exclusively for getting the right kinds of uh, powder matched up with the number of grains I need to use uh, to make it work properly. This manual has indexes for, uh, or indices, for all the different types of rifle and pistol ammunition you can reload, um, giving you the different types of powder you should use, the different weight of the bullet, and then the usually the starting minimum and then the maximum number of grains you can use if you're using a scale to load for that particular powder for that particular weight bullet. But this book here is, I think I paid $19.95. Sometimes if you buy it with kits, you can get it for you know the equivalent of six, seven dollars. For, for this particular one from uh, Lee, I would highly recommend this or something similar from one of the other competitors out there. You absolutely have to have it because I didn't have this the first time I started and boy was I really regretting it afterwards. Um, so anyway, that's the first thing you're going to need to get. The second thing, that, which usually is the first thing for most folks, is the actual kit itself. You know, you can buy, uh, and some ammunition you have to, like the, the 8 millimeter, you have to use a press with dies. But starting out with the 7.62x54R Russian uh, ammunition, I just got one of the simple Lee loader kits. They're very simple and, and efficient. You could use them just as is. Uh, supposedly, this uh, dipper has the exact amount that you need to use. I don't trust it as much. I'd rather use the scale, but that's just me. Uh, starting out, though, for most of the major types of ammunition you use out there, except for 8mm, of course, this is all you need to get started uh, reloading. So anyway, that's the next thing you need to get, and that's about $20. Everybody should have a rubber mallet uh, or a rubber plastic hammer mallet, whether it's for you know, reloading the tap down, the, the bullets in and out of the dies, whether it's for unjamming something at the range or killing something on the floor that you don't want to see there like a mouse. This is the perfect thing to use. Uh, and it's about six, seven dollars from Home Depot. So you need to get that. When we're doing these kits, you sh you can use this kit to to prime your uh, bullets. I don't, I really don't like the way it is. I mean, for this kind of ammunition, I'm going to have to do it because I don't have the right kind of uh, shell holder to to use the auto primer. But for most other ammo, I like to use what's called the auto Lee auto primer, and basically it's this uh, tray that holds the primers that you put each, shell, each uh, cartridge at the top here into and you essentially squeeze it in and it pushes the primer in as opposed to having to hammer or tamp it down which I really don't like doing. And unfortunately you got to have the right kind of uh, shell holder set and for this particular one I don't have it. Usually for most other ammunition you can get one of these auto prime shell holder sets. It has basically a dozen of the most common ones. Unfortunately, this one is a Type 16 and it's not in this set. So we may not be using this today, but I would say for most reloading purposes, you should get one of these. And this is uh, the, the shell kit. It's maybe like less than 8 or $9. Dollars. 
the auto primer I think is six or seven dollars, maybe eight, I don't know. Anyway, uh, the next thing you need to get, obviously you need to have your ammo here, which we'll go over in, in, in a minute, of course, it needs to be fired. Uh, you also need to have, I think, a scale. This one here is from Frankfurt Arsenal. It's, uh, it's a really good scale. And I paid a lot for it, like maybe thirty, forty dollars. But it's a digital scale that gets down to point zero one grains. Uh, I mean, it's, it's a very fine scale to use for our purposes here. It'll allow you to get the most accurate weights possible, especially if you're trying to work up loads. Comes with this scooper here. I don't like that so much. I bought for three or four dollars more this scooper slash pourer, which is very easy to use to pour your grain into the actual cartridges. But that's you know. I can't remember where I got this from. This is not Lee. This is someone else. But it's only three or four dollars. So anyway, that's the scale there. Obviously, you got to have um, lubricant. This is the uh, Dillon Case lubricant. This is a spray-on alcohol-based uh, lube. A lot of folks prefer to use something that you you wipe or smear on. I don't like that because it gums up your your dyes over time. This is much easier to use and sparingly. I've already used it for maybe about two or three hundred reloads and there's still plenty of it left to go. And this is only about six or seven dollars too. So I would recommend getting that. If you're going to use the spray, you have to find a way to spray the cases on both sides. So rather than put them in a tray and get it all messy and have to spray it over and over and get globs of, the, of this uh, lube on it, I created this. If you have a plank of wood that's about, I don't know, maybe a foot and a half, two feet long, and some deck screws. I put 20 of them in here, you know, just drilled them in just deep enough so that they'd set, and then clipped the tops off with a very strong wire cutter, basically, you know, one of those uh, fence cutters. And then you can take your spent cartridges, turn them upside down, put them on here one at a time, and you know, there's 20 of them, so that's the exact same number you usually get in the box. You can line them up, spray one side, spray the other, and then you're done. You don't have to you know, overspray it allows you to be very efficient with the way you spray it, and then it, you can let it dry very quickly. It may only take about five minutes for it to dry, so that's something else you might want to consider making. Um, let's see. Oh, obviously, you got to have your glasses, your protection goggles. Not necessarily for the whole process, but certainly for any part that requires you to use the primer, uh, especially if I'm going to be hammering the primer, which I may have to do in this video into the uh, cartridges. I'm going to be using this in case one of those goes off by accident. And then uh, finally you need your powder. Uh, this is Hodgden, Hodgden's uh, H4895. I haven't used it before. I usually use H414. But uh, for, for this I wanted to try this kind of powder here. I've heard it works a little better. And then finally, obviously you got to have your uh, primers. So I got from the local gun store a uh, hundred of these um, CCI large rifle primers. And that's all you need for this particular type of bullet uh, for 8 millimeter for 303 British, really large rifle primers is all you need. Um, so that's pretty much it there for those materials. And lastly, I forgot to mention, you got to have your bullets too. Let's see, for... Uh, for this project, I'm probably going to be using these uh, 311 diameter uh, bullets. That's about the diameter of the bore, uh, so these should work just fine. Uh, some people use 308, um, but I'm, that's not what I'm going to use. And I'm probably not even going to use the 125 grain. I'm probably going to use the uh, heavier 150 grain this time around, since that's pretty comparable to what they use in the sur surplus ammo. So in any event, I thought I'd uh, show you those items there, and now we'll basically get started doing the video. Here we go.